Okay, so this video is for anyone who gets to uh, preach or uh, teach in fairly large audiences where it's more of a monologue type of thing. And most teaching, most, uh, most teaching in the church is not monologue. Most of it is a dialogue. It's interaction, questions and answers. But if you have that privilege to preach or to teach in front of a fairly large audience, hopefully this video will help you come up with a simple plan for um, writing out your notes. And preaching doesn't have to be super complicated. It, uh, it can be fairly straightforward and pretty simple. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to get yourself a big idea statement. And we talk about that in another video. But basically what the big idea statement is for preaching is where do you want to take these people? What does God want to do? It's a destination that you're trying to get people to. And so you want to write that big idea statement up in one sentence. Have it be clear exactly what you're trying to do. If it's memorable, even better. The next thing that you want to do is write a map and the map is basically just going to take people on a few points from where they are right now to your destination which is the big idea statement or the point of your talk and so you're not writing an outline an outline is just a collection of kind of random ideas you're writing a map which says i'm here now i'm going here now i'm going here now i'm going here and so an example of that would be everyone encounters some form of evil in their life point one Point two, most people don't know what to do when they encounter evil. Point number three, Jesus proved to his disciples that he could overcome all evil. Point number four, when you encounter evil, you can either choose to do it by yourself or you can choose to allow Jesus to fight evil for you. The big idea for that sermon is Jesus has all authority over evil power so we don't have to be afraid and fight alone. The next thing that you want to do is you want to turn each of those points into a paragraph. And so you will begin with your simple statement of that point, then you'll include a description. And I would encourage you to use an illustration, to use a story, to use an anecdote of some point. And then when you close that paragraph, restate your main sentence. So here you go. As an example, most people don't know what to do when they encounter spiritual evil. I was at a, uh, a, a appliance store the other day and I met this uh, kid and was just talking to him about his life and he said he said he had had a bad night the night before because he couldn't sleep and I said why couldn't you sleep he said because uh, demons were keeping me and my roommate awake and I said it's a bummer what you what you do and he said nothing I didn't know what to do because the reality is most of us don't know what to do when we encounter evil. So the next thing that you should do as you're preparing is um, make sure that you're, you're constantly illustrating and you're constantly bringing to life. Most people are more visual than they are verbal. And so if you're able to tell a story, tell a joke, um, use an illustration, people are going to latch onto it. Just think of the way that Jesus taught. He was always referring to visual things, things in the real world in order to make it come alive. And so when you're taking notes and preparing, it's a good idea not simply to just write a word down like pride or apples or grandma, but instead to write out the story and say, here's a sentence that describes a story in my life or in someone else's life that will illustrate what's going on here. So as you're writing down stories, make sure that you use complete sentences. The next thing that you want to do after you've got your big idea statement, then you've got your map of where you're going to go, you've got illustrations put into that map, then you want to bring back up um, and put into it some transition statements. And transitions basically are, are the bends in the road. When you go from point one to point two, that's a bend in the road. So a transition statement slows me down and says, Here, here's how we move from this point to that point. Often you'll find, if you're paying attention, that teachers really lose their audience when they don't put in transition statements because they make one point that's really clear to them, and then they just jump out of nowhere to another point and the audience is lost. And if you're able to connect the dots for people, it'll be easier for them. And so as an example of that, you might say, you know, God loves people intensely. Point number one, transition statement. Throughout the Bible, we are called to imitate God's character. Point number two, we as Christians need to live lives of love for other people. So when you're trying to write a sermon, here's the, here's the thing. You want to make sure that you have a big idea statement, where are you taking these people, a map, 
How are you gonna get there? Some illustrations, what does it actually look like? And then transition statements to help you move from point A to point B.